So here we have an assortment of hunting crap and a dog. Uh, the on the person gear, it's not like my pack or you know the hunting clothes or whatever, it's just like um, pretty much the bum bag and the bino rig. But we'll go through all of this assorted shite and we'll have a quick talk about it. So I'm gonna be using this. I used this for about six months last year. I reckon it's pretty bloody awesome. Um, now the way I hunt is I'm not multi-day, I'm not like taking a big pack and sleeping overnight and sort of stuff. I'm going in, I'm probably doing about 10K a day maybe, stomping around, if that, five to 10K, just depends on where I am. Um, but I'm generally not that far from, you know, a road or the camp or uh, anything like that. So I don't usually carry a pack to pack the animal out. Usually I'll just have this small bag with some assorted gear in it. Um, and then if I shoot a deer, I will then go and get the bag uh, we'll drive the car, car as close as I can, get out, and then use the pack to pack the animal out. So this is just a Hunter's Element bum bag. Um, it is pretty cool, so it's got a little shoulder harness on it. It has little ammo holders on each side, and these are good little pockets just to put you know, dog leashes and, and other little things I'll need to grab uh, pretty quickly. Decent amount of size on the inside, that's one pouch. You've got another pouch there, big gap there. You know, another pouch there. I like this on the bottom, because sometimes in the morning I'll go out wearing a jacket, and then it'll get too hot, take the jacket off, roll it up, and then I can put that on the bottom of my bum bag. So generally, most of this crap here is gonna fit into the bum bag, like my water bottle, you know, that sort of thing, um, and all this other stuff. So most of the stuff either goes in the bino rig or goes into the bum bag. Talking of bino rig, so here I have the Hunter's Element XL. When I did my review on the Hunter's Element bino rig, uh, and that was a couple of years ago now, I was using the smaller size, and that's, I believe, the reason why I didn't particularly like it. Um, the bigger size allows me to fit my binos in there a hell of a lot easier, um, and they can come in and out a hell of a lot easier. And these side pouches are actually big enough to hold my GPS and my dog GPS. Yeah, I've gone back to using this. I got rid of my Roka 31. I found it was too big, too cumbersome, got in the way of my rifle when trying to shoulder it. Um, and after a couple of years of using that, I ended up, yeah, obviously I've ended up going back to Hunter's Element. I did also use a Vortex one for a bit, and I also used a Loophole one for a bit. I may do a whole separate video just on bino rigs, um, and those those few different bino rigs that I have used over the years, and uh, my thoughts about all of those. So if you want to see that, drop a comment in the comments box below. Uh, inside my bino rig, I use a pair of Vortex Dimeback um, 10x42s. This is the only Vortex gear that I own now, everything else is loopholed. Uh, but those binos are pretty good. Eventually I do want to go to a pair of laser binos, whether they are Vortex ones or a different brand, I haven't decided yet, um, but I do want to go to a pair of laser binos. So if you've got a recommendation on a good pair of laser binos, particularly a set that will Bluetooth to my phone and give me an option for a ballistics app, if you know something good, drop it in the comments because I'd love to hear your opinion on what you think is the best. Now, if I'm not using the bino rig, I'm gonna to go to just using this. A lot of hound hunters, uh, pig hunters, and that sort of thing use this sort of rig where you can just fit in your radio or your GPSs or whatever. I now wear glasses, and I never used to, and I've not really found a good way of being able to use my binoculars with my glasses on because of um, you know, however my prescription is. I can't get, essentially I can't get my face close enough to the lenses uh, with my glasses. Now obviously I could go to contacts. Sometimes I don't wear my glasses at all when I'm hunting because it's mostly close range that I can't see. I'm very particular about my lenses, so I don't like taking my glasses off and hanging them off things while I use my binos or you know, putting them on my head or anything like that because I don't like getting dirty lenses. It's just my personal preference, I'm a little bit OCD like that. For the latter half of last year, I got my glasses mid last year. For the latter half of last year, most of the time, I just wasn't wearing my glasses at all when I'm hunting. So I might just continue doing that and, and use my binos, but I may just go to wearing this and then putting my binos potentially just slung on a, on a normal sling or put them into my bum bag. So that way, if I do sit down to glass, I can just rip my bum bag off, pull the binos out, take my glasses off, put them in a, in a case, and then continue glassing. So I've really decided you might see me using both of these interchangeably throughout the year. But as I said, I'm still working my way through that. It's a whole new thing for me. Let's just talk about all, this, the, all the other stuff that goes in the bum bag, and we'll go on the electronics a little bit later. As I said, water bottle, these are like $10. Yeah, it's just a water bottle, one litre. Um, and that just goes down in my bag, um, as I said, I'm not really going that fast. I don't really need to carry liters and liters and liters. Um, I've found that that's generally enough because a lot of time I'll do a hunt out of camp 
or out of the car, come back to the car or the camp, and I can refuel, I'll refuel my water and, and eat and then go back out again. So I'm usually doing, if I'm out camping, I'll do, you know, two to four mini hunts a day. Um, so I don't need to be carrying a lot of supplies on me, particularly of how close I am to the car. Med kit, this is actually empty at the moment. Normally that's got a tourniquet and blood stoppers, um, a normal snake bite shite in that. We have, this is my dog training whistle. Um, it's a clicker. So, Sit, sit, good boy. Sit, train clicker. It's also got a whistle, so if they get out of range and I need to call them back, uh, instead of yelling like a fucking idiot, I can just blow on the whistle and, um, and they'll come back. I've got this flex mark. Um, you know, it's a Samba call. If you actually just rip that um, cover off, it says elk underneath it. So, <coughs> normal call. That usually gets the dogs excited too. Um, so I've got that in the kit. Um, knives. I've carried this for a while. I'm probably going to piss this off this year because I find it to be quite useless because um, it's just a skinning knife. The gut hook on it is quite useful, um, particularly if you're doing a zipper cut up the back of a deer. But I'm probably not going to carry that this year. I'm probably just going to stick to... Wait, Hunter, fuck off. Um, this Havlon. Now, I've mentioned this a couple of times. I like these knives. Replaceable blades like a scalpel, essentially pretty fucking sharp. Um, have cut entire legs off deer with that at the ball joint. Um, the only thing they're really crap at is getting through the skin, particularly with the tip, because you can snap the tip off pretty easy, especially in Samba skin, because they're quite thick. Um, so I usually carry that and a few spare blades. I always carry that because the first time I used it, I had to cut a deer up. I didn't have this, this is, this is the little um, gadget to get the blades off. I didn't think about how slippery those blades would be covered in blood um, and I nearly sliced my fucking finger open. So I always carry that because it just makes it safer to get the blades off. Putting the blades on, you can do it without the tool, so that's fine. Uh, let's move over to slings. So I usually use this as the Maroka 30 stalker sling. Um, I think it's pretty good. What I did do though, is I made uh, my own little sling attachments. The way they want you to attach it is just tie a knot, which I think is a bit poo-poo. Um, so I made these little metal tabs that locks it into place. Um, I find that to be a hell of a lot more stable and then it doesn't roll around. I mean, if you've used a stalker sling and you haven't used um, a gadget like this to hold the strap on, you'll know what I'm talking about. It slips around a bit and a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, but with those little things, it's quite enjoyable. This other one here is a Nigolo sling. Um, that's just a normal two-point sling. I do have another version of this, which is two straps. It's a backpack sling made by the same company. That's mainly geared towards um, trailing. So if you're using the dogs and you've got your rifle slung, the backpack sling keeps the center on your back um, and makes it a little bit more comfortable because you're not really worried about the gun. The gun is more of a, a backup thing because um, you, you're more than likely just trailing, as in like trying to follow up a wounded deer or you know whatever type of animal that you are hunting. Go back and focus, you bastard. Let's move on to electronics. I've had a fair few questions about Garmin stuff, um, and if it's worth it, and I would say that yes, yes it is worth it. So let's get rid of that pen. I don't take a pen out hunting with me. Um, so let's start with the non-Garmin stuff. So I use a GME um, EPIRB. Got this on sale at Anaconda for a hundred and something-ish dollars. All right, obviously you've got to register it when you buy it and all that sort of good gear. They're good for 10 years um, and then you've got to fuck them off because of the battery, apparently. Um, but yeah, I keep that as a backup safety, um, mainly because of my health conditions. Um, I'm at a high risk of stroke and I've broken my back. I like to have that on me just in case, you know, I have a trip or a slip, um, I'll probably do my back in and then I can't move. So I like to have that on me. Um, and also, you know, having a stroke out in the bush is probably not the most ideal thing in the world. Um, so I carry that because the S in DRS ABC is send for help. So one of the first things you should do, click on your EPIRB before you go to doing airway breathing circulation, defib environment. Bam, I still remember that shit. Garmin Electronics. Let's start with the Garmin Rhino. Um, I think the Garmin Rhino is excellent. 
a lot of the people I hunt with have Garmin Rhinos, whether it be a 650 or a 750, they're all pretty much the same thing. Um, 650s always have a smaller screen. Uh, my mate reckons his 650 lasts longer in the battery than the 750. He's probably right. That's a good bit of kit because Obviously you can ping each other's locations, send them grids of like, hey, my pack is stashed here. I've dropped a deer here. Can you come and give me a hand? Um, whatever. The radio and it's not the best thing in the world. Um, if you're in the same sort of um, like basin or valley system or whatever, generally you can get in contact with each other on five watt with your normal rechargeable battery. If you flick that over to the version where you can stick double A's in the back, you actually have to drop your power down to, I think it's two watts. So your range of your radio drops significantly. In the event that I don't need to talk to other people stalking um, and flicking grids to people, I just use this um, really cheap, uh, I flick to this really cheap um, handheld. So if I'm doing like a Fox drive or whatever, um, I'll just flick to that. And that seems to have a bit more range than that. It just depends on what I'm doing um, because this, being my dog tracker, also has maps in it and I can also navigate off that as well. So I don't always have to have this. I'll only carry this if I'm stalking. Um, and if I'm not, I'll carry, well, turn the light on. If I'm not, I'll carry this, because uh, I can have off this. And you can also, if you're other, with other dog hunters, um, you can ping locations and crap. It's a little, not as functionality as the Garmin Rhino, but it's good enough to get you by, because um, you can track the handheld, um, like the handpiece itself plus their dogs. So if their dog's with them, you know where they are. Um, so obviously that links in with the uh, Teddy 15s I did hear a rumor that they're trying to make, or they are bringing in a rule where the, um, where the prongs um, for shocking are gonna be illegal in Victoria. I checked the legislation, the current legislation that's listed on the internet, um, which I believe was updated in 2019 or 2020 still says that they are legal to have for a hunting dog, um, but someone did mention that they might be changing that. So maybe if, you've, if you're using this collars, keep an eye on that. Um, I know that in other states, um, Queensland they're legal, but like New South Wales, they're illegal. Um, I think South Australia and maybe Western Australia. Um, obviously check your local legislation. As I said, I checked it for Victoria. It still hasn't listed they are legal, but they may be changing. I'm gonna to have to keep an eye out for that. Um, if you've got any information about that, please swing on my way because I wouldn't mind reading uh, any new information or new legislation as it comes out. And obviously if it's legislation, if it's not written in the legislation, it's not a thing. Um, so if it's just a rumor, it's a rumor. Um, if it's not written down, it's not the law. And that's the way, well, that's the way I understand the law anyway. If you're a lawyer and you know differently, drop it in the comments below. Garmin Instinct watch. I don't usually wear watches. Uh, I bought this a few years ago and now pretty much, and you can see it's got no battery in it because that's how fucking little I wear it. Um, the only thing I wear this for is when I go hunting with the dogs, I can put it onto track mode. So this will feed into this. Uh, wirelessly and then tell me a little arrow uh, which direction and how many meters my dogs are away from me. So it's the only thing I use that for. I don't wear it as a normal watch because I don't really wear watches. Just a lens cleaning cloth. That's from Scoped Out Performance Optics. Go look them up. I just bought a scope from them. Pretty easy to deal with. Now obviously that's to clean my spectacles. Obviously I have a lot of electronics I want to be able to clean. Um, binoculars and my uh, rifle scope. So that's just a handy little thing to have in the kit. So there you go, that's just a quick rundown of my kit. Now, let's not go into what shoes I'm wearing, boots, um, you know, hunting clothing, um, pack, anything like that. That's just the, the sort of quick, dirty, on the man, on the dog sort of stuff. So if you've got any questions, leave it in the comments below. If you have any suggestions for what people should be carrying, leave it in the comments below. If you think that my gear is a shit setup, tell me how to improve my gear. I'm always happy to learn um, because that's why we're all on these platforms. I'm sharing my experiences. You guys can share your experiences. It's all happy days. We can all learn from each other. Uh, if you want to support the channel, jump into Patreon, link in description. We talk about crap all the time. Just a bunch of dudes gobbing off, essentially. It's good fun over there. So join us over on Patreon. If not, the other way to help the channel out is to hit the like button, hit subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and I'll see you next video. Hooroo.